Hello, and welcome to Part in the Integration, the business impact of breach fatigue, where we discuss top trends in the channel today. I'm your host, Katie Bavoso from the channel company. Cybercrime is on the rise, with attacks happening more frequently and with greater cost. Research shows the average cost of a data breach worldwide is $3.86 million. But the more channel providers hear about cybercrime and read about the headline making data breaches, the easier it is to become exhausted by the subject, which can make you even more vulnerable to an attack. Joining me today to discuss this is Eric Cole, Vice President of Data Center and Security for Ingram Micro. The way the podcast works is we have three topics with three minutes to talk about each. So let's get started with topic one, identifying breach fatigue. First of all, Eric, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your time today. Tell me what is breach fatigue and how are channel partners combating it? Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I believe it is a real thing. And as you kind of mentioned, it feels like every day there's been a new breach recorded, uh, reported, and it's on TV and it's everywhere. I think, you know, from a consumer perspective, you know, you might think, oh, my hotel just got attacked or the place where I buy coffee got attacked or where I buy my clothes got attacked and it's everywhere. And you kind of get numb from that as a consumer, you might think, oh, well, if it happens, I'll just, I'll change my password and maybe my credit card company will protect me. So it's kind of blase out there. But I think as a channel partner, as an MSP, as an MSSP, you can't afford to be blase to all the breaches. It has to be different. And I think that whether you're a channel partner or a, or a CISO, or even as an employee, we have that obligation to our employer, to our shareholders, to our clients to take this seriously. And really, you know, there are no days off. You've got to remind yourself of the big picture, what the why we're so vulnerable, and what it can, what can happen. I mean, your company, uh, your clients' company, your your business health and reputation is at risk each and every day. For sure, and that brings us right into question two, Eric. Is the threat of a ransomware attack and its potential impact to a company's reputation and bottom line enough to keep businesses investing in cybersecurity? Is that enough to basically beat the breach fatigue? A hundred percent, it is. Um, and ransomware, especially, it's it's a vicious cycle. You know, the more companies that pay, um, the more incentive there is for them to go out and try to attack as many people as they possibly can. In 2020, they said that over half of companies that got hit with ransomware paid the ransom. And 80% of those that paid got hit again. The Department of the Treasury and the Office of the Foreign Assets Control issued an advisory saying that uh, they're imposing sanctions for payments made to these criminal enterprises, whether it's a ransomware gang or even some of the cryptocurrency exchanges. So think about that for a second. You know, those payments are seen as aiding and abetting the enemy. Um, and like, think about Colonial Pipeline, right? It's bad enough. You get hit with ransomware. You shut down for a few days. You can't get fuel to certain parts of the country. They paid $4.4 million in ransom to get their data back, not to mention, you know, the, the challenges and costs to remediate that. And oh, at the very end, now you're liable to get sanctioned in civil fines by the U.S. government. So it's crazy. So I think the message is spend now to improve your security posture or pay dearly later. Well said, Eric. Going right into the last question in this segment, what more can channel partners do to help their customers and prospects, and maybe even their own team internally, overcome breach fatigue and stay vigilant against cyber attacks? You know, security awareness training should really be incorporated into every comprehensive cybersecurity solution. And it isn't just learning how to spot, you know, those emails that come across. It's more around like making sure that we're staying vigilant and we're reporting things that could be risks to the organization, not just spotting the, you know, the testing that's going on. And I mentioned, you know, the sanctions from the Department of the Treasury, you know, like how many MSPs caught that? How many NSPs are aware that they could be liable for financial uh, civil penalties as well for helping to facilitate a payment to the bad guy? So we've got to constantly remind ourselves what's at risk each and every day. Let's go right into topic two, the right security tools. So Eric, question one, how has the pandemic changed the way businesses view and invest in cybersecurity? I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a race to get every, everybody to work from home. Um, and, and I think now, you know, it felt like, hey, we we're going to all get back to the office. That might be slowing down a little bit. But the fact is, 
remote and hybrid workforce is, is here to stay. And that changed everything. We've got a distracted workforce. It's not just breach fatigue. There's Zoom fatigue, work from home fatigue, right? And so there's, there's a lot more risks to organizations by having that infinite you know, ecosystem of, of access from anywhere. And so we're seeing big shifts to, you know, zero trust and really enforcing that the right people have access to the right applications and things like that. So we're going to see that continue. So I think zero trust is one big example of how we're evolving our cybersecurity approach based on a work from anywhere uh, mentality. A little bit of a factoid in this question, Eric, Gartner forecasts worldwide spending on information security and risk management technology and services to grow more than 12% this year after growing more than 6% last year in 2020. With that said, is there such a thing as the right security solution? Um, well, I'll say there is no silver bullet or single solution that can eliminate all the threats, but there are certainly solutions that you can find to to help solve specific gaps or vulnerabilities. And there is a right way that you can go about it. So, you know, I think we use a framework approach. There's a, a number of them out there, whether it's the NIST framework or the MITRE framework, which is certainly gaining popularity, but, you know, channel partners, they, they don't have to go it alone. There are these established frameworks that ultimately will help you to architect a more complete cybersecurity solution or to identify the most important gaps uh, that you have, you know, today and, and use those frameworks to help solve specific business outcomes is, is what we're seeing out there. Eric, what technologies, services, and solutions should solution providers and MSPs be prioritizing in their cybersecurity portfolio? And how can Ingram Micro help with this? You know, we're certainly seeing an increased focus and increased spend on detection and response capabilities. Uh, that's been a big shift that's happening in, in, in data protection, again, all tied to ransomware. You know, with the managed detection or SOC as a service, not all channel partners have the ability to go and invest in their own SOC, but that doesn't mean that they can't, you know, work towards getting these bulletproof solutions out there for their clients. Um, we have to assume the bad guys are in already or they're going to get in. And so we've got to be able to detect, isolate and remediate as quickly as possible. And similarly, now that we've got, you know, the federal government stepping in and saying, hey, not only don't pay, but I might fine you if you do pay, that's just putting more pressure on us to make sure that we can recover the data that we need without having to pay that ransom. And then at Ingram, hey, we're in a great position. We built um, an incredible cybersecurity practice with all of the leading um, solutions and services you could ask for. And so our goal is really to help our channel partners to identify those best solutions to solve a specific business outcome. That brings us into our final topic today. Topic three, cybersecurity and Ingram Micro. Question one in this topic, Eric, where are you seeing the biggest gaps when it comes to channel partners security capabilities? Well, I think, you know, it's a crazy job market out there. Um, so there's an increasing uh, demand for education and training. And whether, you know, the, there's folks hiring new talent that need to be trained. Um, a lot of these big platform vendors are making acquisitions and acquiring new technologies. And certainly we play a role in the channel of helping our channel partners to adopt and embrace uh, these new technologies. But even from a skill set perspective, I mean, we work with up to 10,000 you know, partners buying cybersecurity from Ingram in the US, all with different um, very, uh, capabilities. Some are just saying, hey, how do I get started and where do I get started? Others could be a gold or a diamond or a platinum partner in one vendor's program, and they're still asking us for help. Hey, can you help me with implementation services? Can you help me with design services? Um, and so we're seeing that each and every day. Eric, last question in this interview today, Ingram Micro offers a series of frameworks for channel partners to adopt at a security center of excellence. How do these resources help channel partners get smarter and market, sell, and support IT security at scale? You know, our security teams rely on these leading frameworks such as NIST or the MITRE ATT&CK um, framework to help our partners ultimately to build more comprehensive cybersecurity solutions. And they're really focused on education and enablement around those frameworks, as well as around new and trending technologies, SASE, Zero Trust, Identity and Access Management, to name a few, and really taking a vendor agnostic viewpoint to help our partners to understand what's new and what's going on in those specific segments. 
Eric, thank you so much for your time, knowledge, and expertise today. And thank you at home for joining us. Before we go, I'd like to list my three takeaways from today's discussion. One, ransomware attacks could now cost even more. If a business pays the ransom, it could then be fined by the federal government. Two, cybersecurity awareness training should be a constant priority, especially within a remote and often distracted workforce. And three, Ingra Micro uses leading security frameworks to build comprehensive, scalable cybersecurity solutions with a vendor agnostic viewpoint to help partners become the trusted security advisors to their clients. Once again, thank you for watching or listening to this episode of Part in the Integration, The Business Impact of Breach Fatigue. I'm Katie Bavoso, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>